Hello and welcome. This is Lavrin with the Fan Screens Academy. Today I'm going to take a look at some more chat GPT generative uh, methods and things that you could use the platform for. So the content I'm building is for personal use, not for any sort of um, commercial aspects of, of or marketing or selling. Really what I'm trying to do is just kind of use the tool to help me write and also to give me some context to base some of the uh, materials that I want to generate for the Fantasy Grounds platform. Certainly you can use this for any platform or you can even use it just to create and write things, but I'm going to use this in a, specifically in Fantasy Grounds. That's what I, I normally do. And I wanted to also tell you that I'm using a paid version of ChatGPT. So uh, some of the things that you'll see here you may not have access to depending on if you have a paid account. And then I'm also using some plugins, which are not normally a part of ChatGPT 3.5. Uh, these are still in beta. And the plugins that I'm using today are basically text-based things where they can actually take a URL or some sort of web address and extract the information out of it. So what I'm using is I want to set a one-shot in Baldur's Gate. And I've asked ChatGPT to help me to bring in some lore for Baldur's Gate before I start building anything because I want to have some context, the names, places, things, and then I'm going to ask it to formulate the actual content for me instead of having it make everything up and then have half of it not make any sense and that sort of thing. Um, to be unique and original is difficult to do um, in an established world. But it's even worse when nothing makes sense. So it, I kind of prefer that it kind of relies on some of the canon and some of the community developed content. So the, you have to kind of assume that wherever your source is is somewhat accurate. It's not going to be 100%, but at least you have some context for what you're going to build. Now you could do this for Traveler or any other uh, wiki or blog, uh, depending on where you get your information from. But this is a way to kind of pull it in and organize it so you're not having to go to these kinds of websites every every five seconds to pull information, reformat, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to pull that information for the pur purposes of creating a one-shot. I don't need to be 100% accurate, but at least I'll have some names, places, and things are really what, what I'm after here. I don't really care if the lore is consistent with time and, and all that. And I'm trying to leave out the video game stuff, not so much the lore, but just anything to do with the upcoming video game or with any past iteration. So I want to kind of get rid of the the video game aspect of it, even though that's a big part of its history. And I'm using the OpenAI Chat GPT. As you can see, this is their uh, Twitter. So I'm going to close that, go back to Chat GPT. So the prompt here that I used was for the purposes of lore, context, and background, please organize, clean up, and list some facts and knowledge about the city of Baldur's Gate. Do not include real world or video game stats or data. Only the story information is relevant. And then I'm going to copy and paste the actual URL because I have a plugin that will read the URL. Um, if you're using ChatGPT 3.5, Sometimes it knows what you're talking about if you put a URL in there, but it'll say something like, I'm OpenAI Chat GPT, I can't read the internet, I'm limited to 2021 and that sort of thing. That's all right. It, it'll still generate some content for you, but it may not be as easy to extract the information. So I just kind of wanted to make that clear. So I'm using a paid version. Um, I'm using uh, some plugins, which you have to sign up for a beta for that. And then the plugins I'm using are allowing me to extract um, information from like one page at a time in the background. So I'm going to do first, I'm going to do this uh, Forgotten Realms Wiki um, fandom website first. So let's see what we get. So once I hit this, it's going to think it's going to look at this link and it tells me that I'm it's using this access link plugin. So that that plugin will go to the URL and it will pull the data out of there. And then it's going to do that within the context of what I've given it up here. So I don't get all those extra um, little notations here.
All right, so there we go. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but it's uh, the chat is or the voice is losing focus. I'm not sure what's going on, but anyways, I'll see if it can handle this this uh, URL. If it can't, then I'm going to use a different plugin. So this is called Access Link. And so far, it has failed. So we'll see if it can handle that. This is a public document, so it should be able to pull this out. However, if the plugin is broken or they need to work on it, okay, yeah, so it did um, actually get that one. So I don't know why it had trouble with the other one and, and not this one. So uh, it just depends on the website, how it's formatted, I guess, and the capabilities of the plugin itself. So there we go. All right, so it's pulling that information. So this is stuff that I may or may not need for a one-shot in, uh, for information, but I kind of like to have that uh, context because it's very, um, you know, it's very difficult to write all this stuff all the time. So I'm just kind of using it for my myself, so it, it it's easier to do. So it's pulling quite a bit of information. So while it's doing that, I'm going to pull up my personal t template that I use for creating content in, in ChatGPT. All right, so please note the specific uh, can vary depending on time period and specific campaign data. Yeah, so I don't really care so much about the time. All right, so what I'm going to do is put in a prompt to create a um, kind of like a one-shot but I want to use this as a way to organize the information. And then I want to give it a theme of some sort. So we'll do like an adventure with political intrigue or something like that. So I did a class on this the other day. And I'm going to pull up my notes from that. Okay, so the there I have an article that I created a while back, uh, not too long ago, and it has some video examples like the ones that we're doing now, and then it also has uh, some some ideas of what you can do. And let's see, so here's the some of the import tools that you can use for Vantage Ground. So, so that's for tables, and then there's a conclusion, and what's this? This is for stat blocks. Okay, so here's the prompt. Uh, professional adventure design template for the D&D 5e rule set uses a guide to create an adventure with detail and substance. Start and execute with the following. So I'm going to take this um, information here and I'm going to copy and paste it. Now, mind you, this prompt is a little big. Like this may not work well um, because chat GPT can only handle so many tokens or characters so you have to kind of be careful what you're asking like this is kind of overkill but i'm going to go ahead and use this but i recommend that you have a smaller prompt because that it's almost in the uh, category of ridiculous to be honest so i want to go ahead and take that information and i'm going to plug that into chat gpt and it has a uh, some context here so that's that's good because if it needs to pull any names places and things it will have that above so I'm going to hit Control V for copy and paste. Venture content is okay. So this is just an outline. This is just asking it what I want. Um, so it's going to give me the intro, the adventure hooks, and then some of the formatting for the locations, and then the the aftermath and and that sort of thing. So th this is kind of my go-to template when I'm creating content. Um, I want to put uh, the theme is an evil cult and political intrigue. So I want it to uh, basically theme it after that. And having a uh, one shot to do a political intrigue is, is kind of def difficult, but I'll go ahead. Maybe I won't put that. Uh, let's do a kidnapping because that's easier. That's like go and rescue somebody. I mean, that's a pretty good one-shot thing. Political intrigue could take a long time to, to build that up. So it might have a little bit of 
intrigue. So let's do that. So the theme is an evil cult and a kidnapping. But there should be a little bit of political. Um, so I want some political intrigue. I don't want it just to be, oh, go rescue this guy with no context. So that that's another thing that's kind of sucks about smaller adventures. It's kind of hard to put all of that into one adventure when you got all this stuff going on. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and hit go for it. And let's see what it gives us. Because now this will be the point where I start actually taking this content and putting it in fantasy ground. So it's given me an adventure background. So in the city of Baldur's Gate, a cult known as the Ebon Claw has been growing in influence. They worship a god of chaos and have been kidnapping citizens for their dark rituals. The city's leaders are concerned, but their efforts to investigate have been thwarted by the cult's influence within the city's bureaucracy and merchants guild. So that's a really good, you know, kind of a ramp up to it. So here are the hooks. The party is hired by a wealthy merchant whose daughter has been kidnapped by the cult. Why does it always got to be the daughter? Uh, a member of the city's council secretly contacts the party, offering them a reward for investigating the cult and rescuing the kidnapped citizens. And then the party finds a mysterious note on a cult member's body hinting at a large-scale ritual that could bring disaster to the city. So that's a pretty good start. Um, I think for a plot twist, though, um, for this part two, or even if this is not the, the main adventure hook, is I'm going to put that the daughter, instead of her being captured and being this weak-willed person, what they, you know, that kind of trope or that sort of fantasy uh you know, the, it's generic, very cliche. So what I'm going to do is actually say that she wanted to be kidnapped or that she actually joined the, the, the cult and made it or staged it to look like a kidnapping so she could justify why she is with the, the cult. And this covers her because she doesn't want to be cut off from the family. So she doesn't really want um, anyone to know that she's part of that. But if they do find out, they're going to think that she was kidnapped or, you know, and abducted into this. So I think that'll be a, a good t uh, plot twist. You go to rescue this person who doesn't need to be rescued. Then you find out that she's working with uh, the cult, which I think is more interesting than just saving some helpless person. I mean, that's, I guess for a scope of a one shot, I guess that's okay, but I think it's kind of boring and cliche. And it always points to, you know, this some daughter is, is been, um, you know, been, taken away you know in some cases that might be good she might not be a very pleasant person and you don't want her around but nonetheless uh i don't think a weak-willed person every time uh is a good way to to put out an adventure it's very predictable and cliche so i'm going to put that little plot twist in here uh, i want to do that now before i do much else with this because the more you start um, adding to this the more complex it gets and then it starts forgetting some of the previous context so uh, that's important to know that and i don't know why it's still going it should not be generating let's see is it so reward aftermath story outro adventure conclusion epilogue optional sidebar adventure hooks yeah i, I don't know why it's doing that so what i'm going to do is have it ask now i don't want to ruin what i had before because sometimes it won't give you back the information that you want so i want to go ahead and add a plot twist so i want to just take the information and i'm going to repaste it in there with all this extra gobbledygook so there's the extra information there's that there's the read aloud there's encounter reward aftermath yeah i don't know what it's doing but it's it's certainly kind of broken. Yeah, that's really weird. I don't know why it's why it's uh, keeps kind of repeating itself. Once in a while, you'll come across that. So here's 1.4, and then down here you got 1.4. So it's it's sort of kind of doubled up on itself. I might have accidentally 
clicked on to refresh or something like that. But uh, let's see. So I'm going to go to here uh, where it says introduction. Yeah, it screwed up somewhere because you can see where it stopped and started again. So it's not a perfect thing. I mean, it's definitely got its got some issues. But I'm going to take that information now and, and grab that in because I, I'm kind of concerned now that this conversation is kind of kind of blown up in my face here. So I'm going to hit copy. I'm going to start a whole new chat because I don't trust the direction it's going. And I think it's acting kind of weird. And I'm just going to put this information here, uh, which comes from the original story that it came up with. And then I'm going to put it in Fantasy Grounds too. That way, if I lose the information or if I run out of computing or whatever the heck the chat GPT does, I'll have that. So this is just a generic campaign. There's nothing loaded yet. I will load the SRD because I'm going to base a lot of the content on that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit next. And I'm just going to load the SRD content because that's all I really need. When you go to play it, you might load a book that has content for Baldur's Gate, you know, that sort of thing. But when you're designing for content, especially if it was for commercial use, you'd want to just use the SRD. That's your safest bet without worrying about copyright and all that stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and hit next and hit finish and then close that. So what I want to do is take and grab a campaign folder. And I'm going to just create a story entry for now. I'm not going to even organize it yet. And just paste this in here. So I'll just put Baldur's Gate text data and just leave it at that. And that way... If I need to refer to it, I don't have to keep jumping back and forth between chat GPT and, and the, this program. So this is all the, the text. Now, if you right click on a text file, you'll see this clean up text thing. That that does is takes all the extra spaces out and such. So that kind of helps you organize the, the information that's being provided. Yeah, I can see where it's duplicated a lot of stuff. How weird. Okay, so that is that. So... That's the epilogue. Okay, so I want to take out this bottom part. And let's see. Yeah, I don't know if I want to take that out, though. Let me, uh... Yeah, that's there. So what I'm trying to do is make get rid of this doubled up information. Okay, so there we go. Wait, what's that? Yeah, this is really strange. I don't know why that that had to do that, but it did. <laughs> it kind of broke the... Yeah, this is ridiculous. So, let's see. Due to the influence, traditional city politics and diplomacy may vary. I'll just say. There we go. And then take this stuff out. Okay, so that's a little bit more manageable. So you don't want to copy and paste big whopping text lists in Fantasy Grounds. It'll act really slow. Um, like this, this, this thing is going to be actually broken up into sections. I'm just getting the text over here. So in case it, it craps out on me, I'll still have the starting point. And that's what I'm more concerned about right now. And then this thing here... Um, this is just uh, the preliminary thing. So what I want to do at the end here is I want to add a story part so that uh, it will include my plot twist. So I'm going to put plot twist, and then I want to put uh, the uh, quote-unquote helpless, I'll just say the um, daughter is not a victim of kidnapping. She is using the abduction as her cover and alibi to work with the cult. So she's doing something that's not not on the up and up. 
I think that's more interesting and, and intriguing than, you know, someone has to rescue someone's daughter. I get so, so burned out. And I, I, I don't know. I just think that it's kind of weak. So I'm not happy with the, the results. I could have asked chat GPT to generate something else, but I like the idea. I just didn't like the, The daughter is not a kidnapping victim. She uses the abduction as her cover and is liable to work with and for the cult itself. So I think that's a really cool plot twist. It makes it more interesting and kind of surprising at the end. And it, during a one shot, I mean, it's kind of cool, like when the players go through the adventure and at the very end, they kind of get this slap in the face kind of thing, uh, as opposed to just getting a pile of treasure. Because at that point, I mean, if you're not going to adventure beyond the one shot, it the treasure's kind of pointless, right? It really doesn't matter. It's not like you're going to level up and go to the next stage or anything. So having this little plot twist in there, I think it's a lot more um, interesting and a lot more um, conducive to a one shot. Because what ends up happening is you'll have all this corny you know, cliche stuff, you go from A to B and, and that's fine. But I, at the end of the one shot, I would certainly like to see that uh, the players get kind of a, some fun out of it or surprise anyways. So this is now this is changing this thing quite a bit. So that's another thing is it'll lose focus and direction if it's too big. But it says that it's a great uh, setup for Dungeons & Dragons adventure. You provided a compelling background, interesting adventure hooks, and a clear path. How about the daughter secretly gets her older brother kidnapped to put her in line to take over? Yeah, see, that would be that would make more sense. I mean, that's – but then, then you have to detail the business and, you know, and that, that sort of thing. I, I like the idea, especially if it was an ongoing adventure. But for a one-shot, I mean – that would be okay if maybe you want to segue this into a, a full adventure. Um, but I don't see a problem with that. But Okay. Yeah, I had some audio difficulties. I think my the cable Yep. Yeah, I think the cable on my Headsets going out, but yeah, I like the idea that daughter secretly gets her older brother kidnapped. That could be part of this. Like we could we could put that in here. But I believe for a one shot though, if that kind of alludes to the fact that you know you might be going further into this, as opposed to just saying, oh, well, she didn't need rescue <laughs> at the very end. So I was looking for more of a, a conclusion, but it would make more sense to give her a motive as to why she's part of the cult, but. I just like the idea that she's not some weakling that's being um, rescued. And not everyone needs to be rescued, and certainly not her. So anyway, so the party has saved the city, influence, okay, the daughter's betrayal. Okay, so here's what it wrote, um, which I think is interesting, because now it's taken and um, added a little bit more to the stuff above. So yeah, it, it did. It added more sections which is really good that's exactly what i'd want so i'm going to take this information and i'm going to copy and paste this into fantasy grounds so i don't lose it and a lot of times when you're creating stuff you'll notice that the chat gpt bot will start um it'll start losing the information 
because it has a token limit. So that means like it can't think beyond a certain amount of memory before it starts crapping out on you. So that's something you have to work with and kind of compartmentalize your work uh, because you don't want to um, have it stop, you know, generating the correct stuff. One of the tips is to go back and, and refeed the original um, information, or you can just have it summarize it and then re put that back in so that it, it will recall what you were talking about as context. Because after a while it loses context and it'll start making up names and stuff that have nothing to do with what you had originally planned. So the other thing that I do with this, uh, this program now that I have a kind of a basic structure is I want to see there's a secret temple. Yeah, I got to kind of go through this, but what I want to do is detail the Ebon, uh, whatever they're called, the Ebon Claw. So let's do that. So I'm going to go back to this chat GPT and I want to give some context and lore. Yeah, Notepad++, same difference. That's that's great. Yeah, Notepad++ is actually more ideal because you can filter it out. It's a true text editor. It's not relying on Fantasy Grounds. It's not as clunky. So yeah, I get it. I use it too. I'm just not using it now. Uh, so I want to take and then go to, let's use, uh, okay, let's do the um, cult. So I'm going to have it detail, detail the Ebon Claw cult. Um, develop the history, the membership and its major players this will kind of give us some more context and if we may not use this in the the actual adventure but we'll have some some lore and some background so that if we meet any of the npcs or we have role playing which is what we want to do we want to have some context and you may not use it during the story, but it's there. And if you're a new GM and you're not happy or you're, you know, you're not comfortable with making stuff up on the fly, you have some content. I think that's where a lot of these more modern adventures kind of fall down. They don't give you anything anymore. These kind of give you a name, a couple of NPCs, a location. That's about it. They don't give you any story. And I think that's one of the things that's lacking. I think they kind of use the excuse that they don't want to railroad and force uh, the GM to use their content that they write. But honestly, if I was new, I'd want all the information I can get. Until I get used to running uh, Fantasy Grounds and a, a role-playing game, I definitely want that content. And I think it's kind of a, a misnomer. You know, they, they don't do that anymore. It used to actually have more story elements in, in the content. Now they kind of just give you a, a shell and you know, some artwork and they give you some tables and a couple NPCs and some items, but they don't really give you a good story. And I think that's where a lot of these adventures fail. Not all of them are that way, but most of them. Okay, so let's talk about this Evan Claw. I like this. This is a whole nother section and I'll probably copy and paste this into a different um, tab within Fantasy Grounds. I don't want it all in one story entry. That way I can go back later and sort all this out. Or like you said, use Notepad++. So the Evan uh, Claw Cult. So it traces its uh, origins back to the early days of Baldur's Gate, when the city was just a small settlement on the Sword Coast. The cult was initially a group of chaos worshippers who were drawn to the power of a forgotten god of chaos, known only as the Evan Claw. I wonder if it's like an animal or something, like a kind of like a totem, totemic kind of thing. But over the centuries, the cult has grown in size and influence using its members' positions within the city's bureaucracy and merchant guilds to protect its activities and recruit new members. Very clever and insidious. The cult's activities have varied over the years from simple chaos worship to more sinister activities such as kidnapping and dark rituals. The cult's uh, current goal is to bring about a large-scale ritual that will unleash the power of the Ebon Claw on the city, causing widespread chaos and destruction. Sounds sounds pretty good. Uh, so membership. So it's made up of a diverse group of individuals from all walks of life in Baldur's Gate, 
Many of its members are influential figures within the city's bureaucracy and merchants' guilds, using their position to further the cult's goals. Others are common citizens who have been drawn to the cult's uh, promise of power and chaos. Members of the cult are identified by the Ebon Claw amulet, so they must have a little magic item type thing. A symbol of rank within the cult, the amulet is a black clawed shaped pendant, often worn under clothing and it's hidden and higher rank, rank ranking members are uh, they have uh, more ornate amulets and they're usually adorned with precious gems and intricate carvings so i'm wondering if uh we could i mean kind of cheating or, or kind of getting ahead of myself is maybe the the i'd say upper management of the the bosses or the people that run this cult uh, maybe the amulets are ascending stone type thing so they can communicate from a distance kind of a one-way thing where they can um, send send a message and then they can send a brief message back something like that so they can stay in touch because they're probably not always together I imagine they're spread all over the place so that, that might be cool like maybe there's only three or five of these things and maybe the players find one of them or something but see there again that's kind of going beyond the scope of a one shot that that kind of implies that you might be using this stuff again so you got to kind of be careful on your scope um, it's it, you know you get into world building and building all this stuff but you know are you really going to need it and that that's kind of a, one of the things you have to kind of rein in uh, when you're creating content is you know I, I want to do all kinds of stuff with this but I got to remember that it's just a one shot so I think just knowing that they have a magical sending pendant would be probably be good enough. But the problem is, is if, if the players get that item or if it's loot, there's no lore for it or, or nothing that you can do with it uh, in the context of the game. And I think that could be useless uh, and overall and kind of a waste of time. But I like the idea of maybe um, just leaving it as it is for a one shot. But if I was going to expand on this, I'd definitely make a, uh, an item a magic item out of this something like that i don't know what do you guys think about that so the scope of this is a one shot but it says a nice little thing here where they have these claw shaped pendants and they're kind of hidden and they're some of them are more ornate i think that might be good enough i just uh you know what do you guys think if this is just going to be a one shot now i, I don't plan on making more of these but if if let's say the one shot goes over well and people want to play it, then obviously you're going to want to expand on it. So, you know, you could paint yourself into a corner uh, if you're not careful with, with how you write your, your content. Um, in most cases, it's for your personal games. don't matter. You can change stuff. But I'm looking at it in terms of time and scope, too. So you got to remember that. And, and really, this whole video is just about uh, the creative process how to use the information that you're getting from an AI generative tool creatively and also, you know, some of the problems and the struggles you might have with it. So that that's uh, really the, the main thing of it. So I'm not trying to necessarily advertise anything in particular. I'm sure there's other plugins and apps that will do better than this, but I think I like the direction it's going uh, for this cult. So now it even gives me some people, which I really think is cool. Uh, so now that we know that kind of the basics of this are fantasy grounds. So we have the high priestess, Lissara. Um, she's the current leader of the Evan Claw cult. Lissara is a charismatic and ruthless woman. She is a powerful spellcaster and master manipulator, using her influence to control the cult and its activities. Lissara is one who plans to bring about the large-scale ritual to unleash the Ebon Claw's power on the city. So if I was going to make this a campaign setting, I would probably detail the ritual more and make the actual ritual in like three or three to five stages. And throughout the campaign, you have to thwart each piece of it to kind of overcome it. But we don't have that time or that sort of scope for a one shot. Uh, so Councilman Thorin, a member of the city council, Thorn is a secret member of the cult. He uses his position to protect the cult's activities and thwart the city's efforts to investigate the cult. Thorn is a cunning and ambitious man, always looking for ways to increase his power and influence, and I imagine his bankroll. So that's pretty cool. You got a corrupt uh, city council member. 
uh, the merchant's daughter, Alara. So Alara, the daughter of a wealthy merchant, Alara is willing is a willing participant in the cult's activity. She uses her abduction as a cover to work with the cult, helping them plan their ritual and recruit new members. Alara is a skilled rogue. See, we didn't know that before. Uh, using her skills to infiltrate and manipulate the city's upper class. So I like that. She's kind of like a high, a higher up operative, and she's kind of like a spy, assassin, you know, corporate. <laughs> well, not really corporate, but kind of like a corporate operative type thing where she's kind of out doing the, the, the hard work. Uh, and then the shadow hand is the cult's enforcer, a mysterious figure who carries out the cult's dirty work. So he probably backs her up occasionally, or he's watching over her, something like that. His true identity is unknown, but he is feared by all within the cult. The shadow hand is a formidable fighter using a mix of combat skills and dark magic to eliminate the cult's enemy. So he's probably like a hexer or something like that. So that's really cool. I kind of like the the I like what it did here. Um, I would have never necessarily thought of these with that much detail right away. So this is kind of where you you save some time is by getting this kind of information. And you can always change it, but it's nice to have this. So I'm going to take this whole section here that details the cult because I can actually use just that in other things. So I really like the, the output on that. The story output is okay. Um, like I said, we had to add in our own kind of plot twist, but I, I like what it did here with this. So I'm definitely going to keep that. And I'm just going to make another story entry and just call this the Ebon Claw Cult. And I'm going to come back and um, clean this stuff up and reformat it. But I want to just kind of get this in chunks. And if I right click and go to clean up text, it'll take out the the spaces on there. And there we go. So we got that information, that information. Uh, so we got the outline and then we have the, the cult itself. So now what we can do is I want to take the adventure hooks and kind of make that its own thing. So I'm going to backtrack a little bit. So we have the background and we have three adventure hooks. So I want to take those and copy them. And I'll probably just make another story entry. We'll call this adventure hooks. And I'm going to paste those in here. And then what I want to do is take these and expand on them because whenever you have an adventure and you're trying to figure out ways to include the, the characters and how they got together and all that sort of stuff, on a one shot, it's harder to do, but you have to kind of assume they already know each other, the, the party members, and or they've, you know, they have a drastic um, situation that's going to bring them together. So in this case, it's the big ritual, and they all find out about it. So the, the adventure hooks to go back and remind us is that let me first, I'm going to format some of these later, but the party is hired by a wealthy merchant whose daughter has been kidnapped. So we kind of already have a kind of a breakdown of what that is all about. And then we have more information about her too. She's a rogue. She works for him. A uh, member of the city's sec uh, council secretly contacts the party, offering them a reward for investigating the cult and rescuing the kidnapped citizens. So what I want to do with that is that this person knows Thorin, more than likely, or sits on the same council seat with him. So whoever this person is, they probably know about Thorin. And I want to detail that. Like, how does he know Thorin? Does he know that he's a member of the Ebon Claw or suspects, you know, that kind of thing? I think that'll be some really juicy kind of plot information. And then this last one is the party finds a mysterious note on a cult member's body hinting at a large-scale ritual that could bring disaster to the city. So that's kind of more of a a generalized thing to kind of bring everyone together. So these are the three adventure hooks. So one of them is focused on this daughter. One of them could be focused on the other council member, Thorin. And then this last one is kind of a big generic one. So what I want to provide for the GM is that they can pick one of these three, they can roll on a table, or they can just make up their own. So that's really a very, very important part of this adventure is to give the people content but also give it the flexibility of making it random 
or of course they can put in their own stuff. So that that's your three different um, ways to handle this part of the adventure is to have people actually, um, you know, give them the tools, but if they don't want to use it, they, they can just skip over it. But I, I think that giving them with the, some ideas may inspire them to kind of do their own thing. And I think that a lot of uh, modern adventures written in the last couple of years, especially Wizards of the Coast content, is just really, really bad for this. It doesn't do a very good job. I think most of us in the community have been around for a bit, and we can see the difference in the quality. I've looked at other content for other adventures, and it looks great. There's a lot of detail there. Unfortunately, they don't have the visibility so you can have a very cool adventure or a very, very unique and beautiful setting. But if you don't have that branding and that recognition and the support from the community, it's really hard to to get that information out there. So there's probably some very, very cool stuff that we'll never see because it doesn't have the, the branding or the advertising and the uh, longevity. But anyways, we're kind of getting off topic. But the the... So let's talk about uh, the adventure hook number one. We kind of already know what that is, but let's talk about that. So let's let's take this plot hook only. And I'm going to copy and paste this, and I want to talk about her, the father, and, and you know that sort of thing. And then we'll we'll have it kind of look back at the previous conversation. So I want to go back to this. And I want to just reiterate what it is. So I'll say for plot hook number one, please um, refer to the previous conversations. So I want it to look back at some of the stuff that we we generated already so it has context. And this is where chat gpt kind of breaks too so if you go too far out like if you try to make a whole huge novel or a really big campaign setting i honestly would recommend that you do it in pieces in separate conversations if you try to do everything in one conversation it's not going to be able to go back through the entire history it just won't you have to keep reminding it what what you were last discussing you have to summarize things and and that's where um, length is is definitely a, an issue in in chat gpt or any generative thing is like there's token limits so that could be you know so many characters or so many words and once it once you're past that threshold you have to either revisit the beginning or combine everything together and then repaste that in and kind of start over almost and and that's where you're gonna you're gonna get pissed off and, and that sort of thing at least for me uh, it was frustrating when I didn't understand the the actual limitations of the chat GPT. And as it is right now, I'm kind of pushing it, but I'm, I'm not too concerned because I'm not doing anything commercially. I'm just kind of having fun and, and being creative and practicing using the tool. So that's the other motive for doing this video. So this is just a, let's say, so for plot, plot hook number one, please take a look at previous conversations. The party is hired by a wealthy merchant. Okay, so I want to say, please detail uh, this plot hook in regards to the family and the patron or father. Because I want to know a little bit more about the family and the, you know, the the actual context of where the where this NPC is coming from. Because even if you don't rescue her, if that's not what you choose as far as how you want to play the game, how what angle you want to come from, her NPC is going to come up somewhere. You might even fight her or something like that. So I kind of wanted to have some context in case. So Okay, so let's see what it does. It's going to give us just information about that plot hook. So the, the merchant's dilemma. Okay, so the merchant's family. The merchant's uh, name is Amon. It's a wealthy and influential figure. Okay, that's, so that's the father's name. He's built his fortune through a successful trading company that deals in exotic goods from across the realms. So this would tie into your suggestion earlier about taking over the family business. So we could totally do that uh, in a longer quest. 
So, Valera's disappearance was sudden and unexpected. One night, she was there laughing and joking with her family. The next morning, she was gone. Her room was in disarray with signs of struggle, and a black claw-shaped pendant was found on the floor, the symbol of the Ebon Claw cult. So, I wonder if she did that intentionally, or she was told by the Ebon Claw leadership to do that so that people are kind of intimidated and afraid to follow the lead. I almost think that's like baiting. Like she kind of wants people to find her. And then maybe she wants to take over the damn cult. Maybe that's, you know, maybe it's bigger than we think. But um, Eamon and Seraphine were devastated, or Serafina, the, the, the wife or the mother. They immediately contacted the city guard and used their influence to push for an investigation. But the city's bureaucracy, influenced by the cult, has been slow to act. So this is where the players come in. So his request is, despite defying his daughter, uh, Eamon has decided to take matters in his own hands. Desperate to find his daughter. Uh, he's heard that the party's reputation and seeks their help. He's willing to use his considerable resources to aid. Yeah, it could be a different cult. Yeah, very much. Uh, you can provide them with a map and contact the city council. Uh, so Eamon's only condition is the party must do everything to bring her back safely. He fears that his daughter is in grave danger and the city's leaders are not doing enough to save her. So <laughs> little does he know that by the city's leadership not doing enough to save her, they're actually saving her. Because if they go after her and kill her, I mean, that's kind of what, what this may turn into without him knowing that. And the fact that uh, bringing her back safely might be difficult, especially if she's fighting all the way back. So uh, this this is what makes it interesting. So the twist is, unbeknownst to Eamon and the party, Alara is not a victim, but a willing participant in the cult's activities. Her rebellious nature and desire for power have led her to join the Ebon Claw cult. This revelation will come back as a shock to the party and will add a layer of complexity to their mission. So this is very themed for what we were doing. I, I kind of like it. So this is going to be the the first plot twist or the plot hook. So we will put this in the fantasy grounds and then um, we'll, we'll use that uh, as needed if someone's going to take this particular thing. So I'm going to actually put the information underneath and I'm going to go ahead and clean up the text a little bit. So this is the first one. Uh, so this is the plot hook. Uh, so, yeah, so this is really cool. I, I like how that turned out. This is work. It's fun. Like, the, this is kind of like the, the I don't want to say the holy grail, but it's it's the reason why I would use ChatGPT. Um, this kind of helps me think. It inspires me, lets me puzzle together things, and it does a lot of the typing and, you know, that sort of thing. I don't think it's the answer, though, for everything. You can't create everything with it, but you can do a damn close. I mean, you can get pretty close. Uh, but you also have to be careful of the wording. Like, if, if you let ChatGPT do everything, eventually, if you're going to use this, especially if you're going to turn around and use it in a commercial product, eventually the people that are going to look at the product, they'll know that it's a product of Chat GPT or MidJourney. The, the community is pretty smart. They're not stupid. Um, if you really want it to look different, you're going to have to reword it, rewrite it yourself. Uh, but the the fact that, you know, you're using the tool is kind of like a way to inspire yourself to write and to keep going. Uh, that's that's where it cut, where it shines. I wouldn't necessarily think that this is the, you know, the, the, the thing that break, make or breaks everything, but it certainly does uh, entertain me anyway. So, so there's that. That's the one ad adventure hook which I think is, is cool, and it's a separate kind of adventure hook uh, that will be useful. So this is, okay, so that's that part of it. All right, so this kind of makes me want to create her actual NPC stat block. So I'm going to do that since i uh, kind of running out of time, and I want to show that. So I'm going to go back to chat GPT, but I'm also going to bring up my template that I used in our class the other day. So there is a kind of a format that I was using for NPCs um, 
in chat GPT. So that way it works in fantasy grounds without having to um, do too much effort in creating NPCs. And you know, anyone who's made content in fantasy grounds knows that can be very lengthy. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to make a rollable list for all three of those. Um, and I don't notice I didn't say table. Uh, it does say no formatted tables because it will cr try to create a table. And I don't want that. I just want a list that's separated by a pipe. So back to chat GPT. Okay, so I want to say this. I want to say create a list from the three plot hooks using the template below. <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so I gave it a template, and I defined the format. So that's important. You know, this definition of the format is important because if you don't enforce that, it's going to give you whatever it wants. So I'm going to go ahead and hit send message. What I'm doing here is generating just a three-result um, table here. Yeah, I don't think it needs to be a, a D100, but it's giving me the format I want. <laughs> I like this. It gave me zero, zero, so I'll keep this, actually. A combination of the three plot hooks. Eamon hires the party to find his daughter. The anonymous council member contacts them with additional information resources. And they find the mysterious note hinting at the large-scale ritual. This leads to a complex and multi-layered investigation into the Evan cult. So that's if you roll 100. The rest of them are weighted towards the, you know, this using one of the three. I kind of like that. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste this data, go back to Fantasy Grounds, and most rule sets have this uh, capability. So. I'm going to go to the tables area. And I want to tell you this, you know, off the off right now that I don't normally skip around like this. I usually try to work on different aspects because I don't want to jump around all over the place in the tools and stuff. But I want to show how to use this effectively. So import text. This is a text table. There's an import button down here. I'm going to hit control V as in Victor. And then what I'm going to do is copy and paste just this part. So if you only want to highlight this certain area and it's got like a, you know, it's basically not letting you highlight it, you can put the cursor here and hold down the shift key and use the arrow key to uh, just select the, the text that you want. And now I'm going to hit control copy, control V. And then I'm going to get rid of this extra text because I don't really need it. And then if I right click, I don't think I need to do anything else. Yep. So what I'm going to do, though, down below is I'm going to define how I want it to import the table. Because that's basically what we're creating. So cult investigation plot hooks. Here's your numbers. It's, it's divided by a pipe. And the reason we use pipes is because sentences like this often contain commas and semicolons and colons. So using those as a separator is kind of risky. It'll actually make separate columns and we don't and rows. So we don't want that. We only want it to use this number range and then separate that from the sentence. So we're going to use the pipe symbol, which is the safest. So in data type, we're going to do delimited. 
And you can also do this in a spreadsheet if you know you can use a CSV file and do it that way. But um, ChatGPT will do it if you give it the right um, information. So I'm going to use a pipe instead of the default comma. And it's asking me, are the column headers in the first row? Yes, they are. That's what this 1D100 and result is. And then it says table ranges in the first column. Yes, so that's the numbers. So now what I'm going to do is instead of saying result, I'll say plot hook. And that'll kind of help label what it is. Okay, so I'm going to hit import. And there we go. So yeah, it didn't do exactly. I'm not sure what how it broke here, but oh, I see this last one. It, it couldn't handle that zero zero. So what I'm going to do is put that in here. Yeah, it didn't like that. So zero and zero. So that says 1D99, which isn't right. So you got to have a two digit number. So let me try that one zero one. Yeah, it's not it's not liking that. Uh, so I'll just change this. So what I'll do is I will turn this into a kind of a weighted table. So instead of doing one through 100, this one will be special. So what I'll do is maybe make this a result of 20. So if you roll a 20, you're going to get all three plots. Uh, the the members are hired by this by the father. So if we divide 20 by 4, we're roughly going to get this range of like 5, 0 through 5. So I'm going to go 0 through 5 here. Or 1 to 5, actually. And then for this one here, we're going to go through 6 through 10. So that's the city council thing. And then we will do this one will be that they find this. This is the generic thing. So we will do 11 through 19. So it's weighted to where this generic one is going to come up more often or or even less because it's got less of a number range. But nonetheless, we could take and make this a little bit higher. So instead of doing uh, 20 only, we can do like 18 through 20 and then just change this thing to 17. So you now you kind of have a weighted table. It's not evenly weighted. It kind of puts more emphasis on potentially rolling this third result. So now that that that's created, now what I can do is lock it and we'll test it out. So it's chat output and I'm going to have it invisible because I don't want the players to see it, but I still want to roll. So I'll go ahead and roll on this and let's see looks like uh yeah so it looks like the party members uh find this mysterious uh message so that's this part what we thought it would be more likely to roll that than than the others so there's nine this is actually talks about the city council member so there's things you can do there to 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 make this more interesting and fun and what i'll do is i'll link this to that adventure hook area so when the DM is looking at this information, he goes, oh, I can just roll on this table so I can't decide what to do. Or they can just pick one. So, you know, or they can do one or two of them, whatever you want to do. But I kind of like giving them the randomness occasionally because I, I think that's fun. And if you run this adventure more than once, it kind of sucks when you have the same thing going over and over. So uh, giving these tools to the DM or the GM for, for running the adventure is kind of... Um, paramount to to designing a good adventure and also for yourself you won't get so bored all right so that's that um now i want to make just the npc and then i think we'll call it i think i've been going for an hour so uh, we'll do one npc and this is where the tool helps a lot so i have another template that i use for npc so uh, going back up here what this does is it helps to you know, to basically, so this is, okay, so this is what I've told it. Um, so let me grab the text. So here's an example. I hit copy. Let me go back into the 
chat GPT generative tool, hit control V. And what I'm doing is telling it down here, I'm saying, uh, let me do this. The text above is for parsing into the Fantasy Grounds Unity virtual platform. Do, do not change anything regarding the structure, formatting, and layout. It is very critical to preserve the layout and the style. Um, and then I'll say for parsing. Because if it's not right, it won't import the, the tables. You might as well just hand enter everything. Okay, so that's that. And I'm going to tell it to um, basically uh, create her stat block. So create an appropriate, I'll say create a D&D &D 5e stat block for the daughter. I don't remember her name right now. For the daughter um, using the template above. And then I gave it all the particulars of a basic stat block. So it doesn't, I don't want just whatever it feels like. I, it has to be a certain format, and that's important. So that's that. And then um, above noting that she is a an experienced rogue i guess we could say so that way it's not some low level or i don't even have to say experience we'll just let it decide what that means because then it might make her too high of a cr level or we can set the cr level so this is a uh, a cr3 kind of you know or most of the adventures are level three so it's a low tier so I'll say create a D&D stat block for the daughter using the template above, noting that she is a rogue and a CR2 level NPC. So that's that's helpful because then it will kind of generate it based on that. Um, she is a human and has a fairly high charisma. So it's kind of said that she uses her charm and her, her influence, so. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, we can also say, what does she use for her weapons normally? It normally just gives you a dagger or something like that. I'll say she is armed with a rapier a dagger and a hand crossbow so she's proficient with those and she wears leather armor so that way it selects some some of you know you can kind of shape it a little bit more it'll generally do most of it without giving it this information but i don't want to have to go back and say oh now i want to give it this now i've done that before with a rapier sword. And I think that's good enough. So if you give it too much, then it kind of messes with it. If you don't give it enough, then you're going to have to repeat it. So let's see what it does. So <clears throat> it's taking a look at the template and now it's starting to generate the stat block. So, so far it looks right. Medium humanoid, neutral evil, armor class 15, or leather armor. So that would give her two, plus she has her con bonus of three, so that makes sense. You kind of have to check the math, because sometimes I won't do the calculations. Hit points look about right. I might give her a few more. Uh, she has deception, persuasion, and stealth. Perfect. Uh, common, thieves can't. That looks right. Challenge rating two, proficiency two. She has cunning action, and she has sneak attack. And she has a rapier, dagger, hand, crossbow, and her reactions. So that's Uncanny Dodge. So that's really good. It did a really good job on on what it was trying to achieve. And now I'm going to copy and paste the text. 
and it looks like it's in the right formula. It the format looks correct, so it doesn't have colons and hyphens and semicolons here. So that helps with the parsing because if it's not correct, it's not going to go in correctly. So I'm going to go back to Fantasy Grounds and go to NPCs. And like I said, I'm skipping around because I kind of want to show some of the tools that you can use with Fantasy Grounds. So this is the NPC importer. So I'm going to hit Control V as in Victor, and that'll put all that in. And I'm going to right click and go to clean up text, which will take out a lot of the spaces and the extra stuff. And I'm going to look this over. It looks correct. Like each each trait has a period after the description. And all the actions look like the verbiage is correct. And yeah, so this looks correct. Um, one of the things you'll notice in some stat blocks when you import them is they'll have a bunch of extra crap in there. You don't want that. And then also the 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 order i've seen it to where it says medium humanoid or medium comma humanoid if it has a comma in the wrong place it just throws the whole thing off so it really needs to be exact so once that's in there i'm going to go ahead and hit import and this is the npc stat block and if you go to the other tab this also has her information here so what i want to do is maybe i want a background for her so I can take this and I'm going to ask it to please generate let's see Alara's background in the context of the adventure and as an NPC so what I'm trying to get it to kind of give me a little bit more of a cool background is I might reparse that and, and include the background in it. We could do this ourselves, but I want to just show you how quickly this can be done uh, without spending hours and hours doing this kind of thing. I don't mind doing the, you know, hand entering one NPC, but when you got like 50 of them, I mean, that's not fun. So the, this tool will, would help a lot. And if I was going to generate a ton of stat blocks, I'd have a whole separate conversation for that. Uh, but this one, I'm only going to have like the cult leaders, maybe a city guard, the main NPCs, and that's about it. Okay, so what I'll do is copy and paste this. I'll look at it in Fantasy Grounds to see if I like the, the context of it. So you copy any of the extraneous information over here. And then, of course, I'll right-click and do that. And then what I want to do is create a header. So I'm going to type background. And if I had artwork, which I can also generate that later, I would also link that here. Probably would have had all the artwork done before I even started this. So or at least uh, have it ready to go. So here's the background, and this particular NPC stat block is okay, but I'm going to delete it because I don't want to, and, and I don't want it to say the merchant's daughter. I want to say uh, cult operative, something like that, and I'll say in parentheses, I'll say rogue. Okay, so that's you know, some of the minor changes that I might make. Let me look at the backstory now. I haven't even read that. So, Alara is a younger child of Eamon, a wealthy merchant in Baldur's Gate. Unlike her older brother, when we talked about that earlier, <laughs> Corin, who is being groomed to take over the family business. He had already did it for us, kind of. Alara has always been more independent and adventurous. She is known for her rebellious streak and her desire to carve her own path in life. From a young age, Alara showed a knack for getting what she wanted. She was charming, persuasive, able to talk her way out of trouble, and convince others to see things her way. So deception, persuasion, stealth, that all makes sense. Um, as she grew older, she also developed a talent for stealth and deception, often sneaking out of the house to explore the city and getting into places she wasn't supposed to be. So she'd go to gambling houses and fight clubs and all kinds of stuff. Um, Alara's life took a dark turn when she was introduced to the Ebonclaw cult. 
She was introduced by their worship of a forgotten god of chaos and their promise of power and freedom from societal constraints. So I am liking the the information that it's given me for her backstory. So it, it's basically in line with with what we were discussing before, and it looks like she was um, introduced to Evan Claw. She wants to get away from the societal constraints, and now that she's a member, she's using her skills and her charisma to further the cult's goals. She has infiltrated the city's upper class, recruiting new members and gathering information for the cult. She has also helped the cult's large-scale ritual using her family's resources and influences to, to aid in uh, preparations. Despite her allegiance to the cult, Elara maintains a facade of innocence. She has convinced her family and the city that she is a victim kidnapped by the cult by, against her will. This deception has allowed her to operate freely with her family and the city's leaders unknowingly aiding in her efforts, which is really, really sinister. As an NPC, she's complex with her own goals and motivations. She's not your typical villain, but rather a misguided individual who believes she is doing what is necessary to gain power and freedom. Her actions and decisions will have a significant impact on the course of the adventure, adding a layer of complexity and intrigue to the story. We could probably take that out, but I kind of like that there for kind of an explanation, like a summary so I'll go ahead and hit import again. And so now we have a revised version. And if you look at this other tab, the new um, parsing tool does a pretty nice job on you know, making this table. It's got this nice formatting in here. I could actually take this background information and put it underneath if I wanted to, and then link her a graphic if I was gonna do that. So this is really cool. So I like the, you know, what, what it did with this. So this is just an example of what you can do with the chat GPT and you know, generative tools. I, what I would do is probably go and do, once I have everyone defined, I'd probably go do all their artwork. So I'd make some tokens and some handout pictures, maybe make a, take a, have a picture generated of, of Walder's gate, you know, from a distance for like a cover, something like that. And, and kind of give this a, a, some life here. It was really cool. I really like uh, how it turned out. So hopefully this kind of helps you guys and gives you an idea of how to use these tools um, for for that purpose of of generating content. I wouldn't, you know, hinge my entire existence on it, but lately the last I don't know four or five months I really did a head dive. Yeah, her name's Alara. Uh, I did a, a head dive into this, and it, it's been interesting and. I don't think I, there's some things I don't like about it. And there's other things that I do. So it really depends on what your needs are and, and how you want to you know proceed with it. But it does a really good job of inspiring and you know kind of getting past writer's block and does a bulk of the typing, which I really like. I don't like to sit here for hours and hours. I'm not a very good typist. And even if I was, I, I'd, I'd be constantly changing stuff and going crazy. So this kind of helps me stay focused. And that's another kind of tertiary benefit of using a generative tool. Sometimes it can take you off course. Like you can take you down a whole different path. Uh, but once you get uh, more disciplined with its use and you understand the limitations, it's a really cool um, way to generate content uh, without spending hours and hours and hours. If I wasn't actually illustrating this and showing this and explaining it and fumbling around here and I was able to focus, I could probably have most of this done in, in one afternoon. So that's really what I'm looking at here for time. I think in a three to four hour period, I can have a pretty robust one shot adventure complete with artwork, tables, NPCs, all that stuff and, and tokens. So that that's really, you know, the goal here is if you're going to run you know, anything for yourself. I mean, this is really helpful for that, especially if you do a lot of homebrew. This would be very good for homebrew GMs that that want to make stuff up as they go and they don't have a lot of time. But then again, you don't want to over prepare. You know, you got that. And then you get sick of running the the store furnished stuff. So this, this really helps with that. 
So take care, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Tomorrow's Friday. And remember that we are having our Founders Day event at the end of July. We have links out there uh, to sign up if you want to be a presenter. So if you have content you want to share that's related to Fantasy Grounds or you have some really cool um, you know, tools and such that you want, you want to showcase, uh, let us know. Just uh, you, know, you can join our community and on social media and stuff. We have all kinds of posts about it. And then we also are looking for uh, people that want to run games for that weekend. So it's going to be a mer kind of a virtual mini convention. I'm working to try to get Smiteworks here. I think I might work with Josh maybe on that Saturday for the weekend uh, for the uh, map tools. And then we have uh, Arkan Forge is going to stop by and talk about uh, their new tools that they're rolling out for Fantasy Grounds to help integrate it more. Um, and then also uh, maybe by that time we'll have an understanding of the latest version of Fantasy Grounds version 4.4.4 which I believe is supposed to be out by the end of this month. And that will be a great thing to put, add into our uh, talks with Smiteworks. And then um, we're going to end that weekend. I'm going to be uh, hanging out with Rob Tui on the All Things Fantasy Grounds show, which I helped found that, or at least helped get it started. And then we're going to also have some games. There are already people signing up to run games. So it's, it should be a pretty nice week. And again, if you want to join our community, just look up Fantasy Grounds Academy. We have a website, all the social medias, all that stuff. So you take